healing of the nation. In the first and the last book, God has shown that he has a diet for his beloved. Don't you think those chapters that come between the first and the last also speak something of it? I think we've seen it here night after night. And we're going to tonight talk about or look at a message called Genesis Protocols as we look at the idea of Genesis, really the whole Bible, but Genesis being the beginning of a health program. This is a health book. It's a manual, it's a treaty on health. And Genesis is the beginning of a protocol, an outline for Hell, we can look at the Bible and we've seen night after night, we've drawn fun things from the Bible, we've seen scriptures that not only speak of hell and healing, but also they have given us tremendous counsel that maybe we never saw in the way that we've looked at it night after night or understood it, but I pray that we've seen and understood wonderful things out of God's laws. We study the word of God together. I'd like to take us to a scripture in the book of Proverbs. We're gonna have a word of prayer and open up with the book of Proverbs and start looking at it, understanding that will take us to our board back there. I know you see this big board behind me. Talk about some of the things on this board, something we talked about before, something we have not, and understand how as we put some of the things we've looked at before and we combine them together tonight, we see a protocol, we see a regimen, we see an outline that highlights secrets of health or main points that we need to look at when it comes to our eating and drinking where we can have that life and life more abundant, that blessing that God wants to give us that Egypt fail to receive. Is that all right? Amen. 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 Let's have a word of prayer as we open the heart and mind to the Lord Jesus Christ. Heavenly, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the Holy Spirit, for the love of Christ and his blood shed upon Calvary for us, and his intercession above even now, according to Hebrews chapter 8, in the heavenly sanctuary above, where he sits on the right hand of the Father and ministers for us as we had seen in the Old Testament, a new and living way. Lord, we thank you that tonight as we open our hearts and minds to thee, that you would pray the Father and send the Holy Spirit to do a work of teaching us. Not that any man, though one stands before you, not that any man teaches you, but the Holy Ghost teaches you as we compare spiritual things with spiritual things. Make the spiritual things plain to our natural mind, strengthen, convert, and heal us, we pray. For we ask that the words of our mouth and the meditations of our heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. As we open the Bible tonight, we're looking for the book of Proverbs. Proverbs, the 22nd chapter. I think I hear the rain falling. Yes. Started praying and I said, Lord, is the latter rain falling? What is uh, but maybe we can understand tonight and even see that the words and understanding of the gospel that we're looking at tonight is a part of the latter rain. Let's see if we can understand that. Notice what it says in the book of Proverbs. We're in Proverbs 22. Proverbs 22. Proverbs, what chapter are you looking for? 22. Proverbs 22. Let's look at verse 20 and 21. Proverbs 22 and verse 20 and 21. Have we seen some amazing things in Scripture? Amen. Have we seen Scripture that you've read before but never saw them in the context that we've seen them in this series? Amen. In Revelation 22, notice what it says. I'm sorry, Proverbs 22. In Proverbs 22 and verse 20, notice the Word of God. Look what God says to us. God says, Have not I written to thee excellent things? in counsel and knowledge that I might make thee know the certainty of the words of truth that thou mightest answer the words of truth to them that send unto thee. What is the scripture saying? God says, have not, in other words, he's speaking as if he's been doing this all along. And throughout this week of revival and health evangelism, have we not seen some wonderful things out of God's words? Have we not seen some excellent things in counsel that have shown us even a better way? God said he's written to us. In the word we found them. He's written unto us excellent things in counsel and knowledge. And look at the purpose. Why is God showing the gospel in the plan of salvation, in the health lines, in the natural world, in the work of the body? He's shown us the plan of salvation. In diet, in the strength from the ground that he's shown us in natural remedies and natural foods, he's shown us the plan of salvation. Why? It says, verse 21, that I might make thee to know the certainty of the words of truth. What happens when we take, and I've had in people come to my meetings that were atheists, didn't believe in God, people that were agnostic, people didn't believe the religion of the Bible whatsoever, but they wanted to hear about health. They had health conditions they wanted to change. They had an idea that they're going to get something along a natural line that would help them in this 
present world. And night after night, I showed them from the word of God excellent things. What does it say there? In counsel and knowledge. So much so that people were made of these things were in the Bible. And they started to listen with a, as a matter of fact, when they tried to taste the juices and they had the different wraps and so on and they started feeling a succession of pain and they started seeing that their indigestion started going away and they started seeing tangible reversal of diseases that medication and psychoanalysis and so on was not doing for them, they started to say to themselves, hmm, this Bible may have something that I may have missed. Or I came here to get a physical uh, consultation or to understand some things about diet and natural herbs and so on and so forth. But I'm over here, what's the same verse 21? Coming to know the certainty of the words of truth. I'm starting to believe this Bible has some truth in it. If I don't know anything else, these words, these scriptures I read are true. The Bible, whether it teaches the gospel of hell or the gospel of salvation, it gives us, it explains to us, it shows us the certainty of the words of truth. When you see that the Bible shows a certain diet and you have taken that diet and it's turned away disease from you, taken disease from the, from the midst of thee, you have a testimony no one can take from you. You know of a certainty that God is true and that his word cannot fail. You, uh, as verse 21 says, also might answer the words of truth to them that send unto thee. Now you are able to be a living testimony and a witness of what God has done and can do for all because God is a respecter of persons. What God did for old, the old king in the book of Isaiah, he can do for you. That lump of fig can still work today. What God did for Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, giving them a diet to maintain a healthy body will also convert and restore a sick body. What God did in the Old Testament for those that had skin disease and so on, that they were cleansed with washings. The Bible said in Hebrews, carnal washings. The Hebrews had a system from God of various types of washings, sun exposure, cleanliness, diet, and also the preparation and use of herbs that cleaned leprosy and all types of skin diseases and internal diseases as well. All the diseases of Egypt were healed by the system of healing, the hygienic principles found in the book of Genesis through numbers. I'll say amen to that myself. God had a way, he had excellent counsels that by reading them, this would be our wisdom among the nations. People would say, what a, what a mighty God they serve that's so close to them, giving them these counsels. It would be a witness for us. It would be a witness to us. It would be a witness to others. And we could answer those that sent unto us and tell us of what God has done for us and also show them in the word these truths. Now, even let's expand upon that. What we see in Proverbs 22 is not just found in Proverbs 22. This same sentiment is taken up by Luke in the Gospel of Luke. The Bible says that the certainty of the words were given to this man in the Proverbs. But notice what it says in the book of Luke chapter 1. In Luke chapter 1, Luke takes up the same idea and shows that this word, this truth, these counsels are found in the Gospel. Notice what it says in the book of Luke. Luke, the first chapter. Are we in Luke chapter 1? You have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, right? Luke is the third book of the New Testament. Say amen if you have chapter 1. Amen. Notice verse 1 through 4. We found in the book of Proverbs, the certainty of the words of truth were made evident by the counsels of God, by seeing, understanding them, testing them to see if they're true. In Luke chapter 1 and verse 1, it says this. Read in verse 1 through 4. It says, for as much as many, that means Peter, all these individuals had written their own gospels, right? For as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us, even as they delivered them unto us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word. It seemed good to me also. Was Luke a apostle with the twelve? But it seemed good to him because he had a knowledge of the truth to make it known. There are people in this world today that believe that because they don't come to you and get their, your permission, you can't make it known. You need to get the approval and permit. Brothers and sisters, if Jesus has done something for you, you have to get someone to tell you to make it known. To give you permission to go and preach and teach and do the work. I've been preaching for 20 years without any type of endorsement from someone to tell me to preach. I've been able to help other people start a ministry without any type of 
help from great organizations and denominations. I believe in the work. I believe in the message. I believe that the work will go through. But I don't have to wait for someone to tell me to do a work. If God gave you the gift, that's God telling you to go and do the work. Amen. God's not going to give you the gift of evangelism to go and sit down in Walmart and, and, you know, and, and push carts around. If that's what you do, hey, praise God. But if you have a calling in your life, you, you would be damned to be, and I don't mean damned in a curse word. I mean damned to hell for not doing what God told you to do. Amen. God doesn't, get, doesn't, doesn't waste gifts. If he's giving you a gift to speak to people and to capture people's attention with the word and have convicting power to the Holy Spirit, you would be lost doing otherwise. And if your mama don't want you to go, if your brother don't want you to go, your husband don't want you to go, hey, you got to go. You got to do the work. But you have to make sure that God's speaking to you. Because many people don't believe that God can call people in this day that we're living in. The majority of people, the Bible teaches us, would be swept away with false doctrine and false spirits. But there is a, a super spirit, a, a spiritual spirit, a, a spirit from above that's going to make it known, make itself known in gifts. Everyone believes, oh, God is with me. The only way you know God is with you is through the fruit and the gifts. Not just, oh, I have the gift of speaking. I used to t run my mouth as a child. I was getting in trouble in school for talking. But the power to capture people's attention and convict of sin was not what I was talking about. That's a spiritual gift. A lot of people can run their mouth. But they have the power to put forth truth with convincing power. That is a spiritual gift. And what does it profit the man to gain all these seemingly outward gifts and your soul is corrupt? The only true evidence God is with you is the fruit of the Spirit. Without love, joy, peace, long suffering, Satan can, in, Satan can counterfeit to a certain degree all the gifts. Prophecy and teaching and so on. He can't counterfeit. Love, joy, peace. Not just, oh, I have love. No, it's all or none. The fruit are an evidence that God is with you, that the Spirit of God has come into you. And your desire to share the word is an evidence that the Spirit of God is working in you. Loving, earnest, aggressive, but kind Christians. Without that love, now you can't be, you know, oh, God's called me to work, and you open your house arguing and fighting. Come on now. The fruit and the gifts. Oh, God's called me to work. I need to go. Brothers and sisters, God is not going to be mocked. And when we look at this idea in Luke and in Proverbs, he says that we must understand the certainty of the word. The certainty that even these messages you've been hearing night after night, God, if you already understand the gospel, has wanted to expand your understanding of the gospel work and the mission. Children of God were not only taken out to preach the gospel, but also to heal the sick and to understand the certainty of this not just Peter not just Matthew not just John but Luke a physician a Gentile thought it good through the Holy Spirit and the understanding he had through the power of God's instruction to him to outline these things and God gave him the spirit of inspiration and is a part of the Bible meaning that you and I we're Gentiles you, can receive, you and I can receive the Spirit of God. You and I can have a part in the work, not maybe what Luke did, but you can go out and tell what you know about Jesus. You say, I thought I came to hell talk. This is what's preaching to me. Brothers and sisters, we have to understand that God wants you to understand the certainty. Because if you go try and tell people stuff that you don't really believe, they'll know it. They don't know what truth is, but they know what error is. They might know what it is, but they know what it ain't. And you start talking that stuff and you don't really believe it, They'll be like, uh, okay, all right, all right. People know the power of conviction. They know that, they say, well, you know what? I don't believe what he's saying, but I believe he believes it. And because I believe he believes it, I'm, you know what? One of the greatest statements in the scriptures is where, in the Bible, one of the apostles said, come and see. I'm trying to argue with people. Come and see. You don't believe, oh, what good thing come out of Nazareth? Oh, come and see. Come and see, come and hear the certainty of the word and see if God is not moving. Because again, let's get back to our text. Let's not escape it. It says in Luke chapter 1 and verse 2, even as they delivered them unto us, meaning the scripture, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word, it seemed good to me also, having, perfect, having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first, to write unto thee in order, most excellent Theophilus. This was a Gentile, writing to a Gentile, the truth of the gospel and all the principles of the ministry of Christ. Notice what it says in verse 4. That thou mightest know 
the certainty of those things wherein thou hast been instructed. He had been taught, but he had to understand the certainty. He had been taught the prophecy. He had been taught the doctrine. But this treatise was supposed to allow him to see that God had a ministry to do and showed him the ministry of Christ, the prophecies of Christ, to show him what he was to do because of the same work that Christ did. As a matter of fact, the work that Christ did is explained of a certainty in the book of Luke. I'll show you two texts. Look at the book of Romans, sorry, Luke 9. Look at Luke 9. Let's we'll look at one passage. In Luke 9, Luke, among the things he showed the certainty of is the fact that Christ's ministry was a preaching, teaching, and healing ministry as an example unto us to walk in his steps. This is the work that we must understand and take hold of in Luke 9. Luke the 9th chapter. Luke 9. Look at Luke 9, verse 6 and then verse 11. Luke the 9th chapter and verse 6. We'll begin there. In Luke chapter 9, and in verse 6, the Bible says this. It says, and they departed. Are we there? And they departed and went through the towns, preaching the gospel and healing some places. Only when it was convenient. They went through the towns. They went through all, and town, they didn't even say they went through the cities. They went to even the small places, preaching the gospel, and they were healing everywhere. Was the ministry of healing separated from the gospel? And the prophecies and the truth. No, no, no. It was preached together everywhere. And as a matter of fact, drop your eyes on verse 11. Verse 11, it says this. Luke 9, 11. It said, and the people, when they knew it, followed him. And re he received them and spake unto them of the kingdom of God and healed them that had need of healing. Those that wanted the gospel. Oh, I'll talk to you about the gospel. Hey, come sit down. Let's, let's talk. But the majority came for the fishes and the loaves or for healing. And as their belly was full, they sat down and heard the gospel. And as their diseases were taken away, they were more apt to now, without prejudice, to listen to the gospel. So no matter how it came about, whether some people were ready to receive, he spoke to them. Some were hungry, he fed them and spoke to them. Some were so bowed down, there was a one lady that was actually bowed down together. She was bowed down like this, she could not straighten her back. God said, how should not God loose this woman that's been afflicted all these years? Can you imagine being bent over like that? You can't sit up, can't straighten up. I mean, if I bend over too long, the blood rushes to my head, I get dizzy. But 10, 20, 30 years? With a word, Christ healed that woman. Every person that was too sick to be able to really listen to the gospel he brought healing. He lessened their suffering that they, in gratitude and also in the vigor of health, could understand and comprehend the scriptures. This is a divine blueprint for the ministry of Christ. This is a divine blueprint for gospel ministry. We're not a true minister of God if we're not doing the work that our master did. He says, follow me. How? In preaching and healing. That all the people may know that this is the truth of God. Now you say, well, that was 2,000 years ago. And times have changed. But what does it say over there in Romans? We're coming to our board. Look at what it says over there in Romans. In Romans, the 15th chapter, it says this. Romans 15. You have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Book of Acts. And then what do you have there? Romans. Look at Romans 15. Oh, this was 2,000 years ago. Times have changed. I need to get a computer and a, and, and a PowerPoint, and I need to do it a different way. Brothers and sisters, they had charts back in Jesus' day. They may not have been important, but they sure had some power, too. Too many people have charts, but no power. It's another sermon. In the book of Romans 15, notice verse 4. Are we there? For whatsoever things were written aforetime, even 2,000 years ago, were written for our, hmm, our learning, that we through patience and comfort of scriptures might have in other words, by seeing the ministry of Christ, this healing can come to us. We can be healed as these individuals were. Christ is interested in our condition that we might be healed and understand and receive the gospel as well. And also that in receiving the gospel, that we may go out and do this work, we can have comfort and hope that God is calling us to a ministry that is just like his. The same ministry that began the gospel dispensation will finish the gospel dispensation. 
the same type of sending forth of apostles, sending forth of disciples that started the gospel dispensation will finish the gospel dispensation. You have the early reign and the latter reign. And healing was part of the early reign. Healing will be part. And the ministry of healing will be part of the latter reign. But you don't believe that, do you? Look at one last text before we go to our board. Look at the book of Hosea. Hosea, the evangelist said before I got up here that God could heal you in a matter of weeks after years of transgressing your body and allowing your body to become uh, 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 affected by the throes of sin, the throes of sickness, the throes of disease. God in a few short months can turn the pain into praise. But you don't believe that. But the Bible teaches that. It's not, it's not everyone. <clears throat> It's not everyone's allowed to have immediate healing or in a few short months to take what decades have done. But many people don't know that in a few short days, God can allow your body to experience through the right use of natural and spiritual help from God. God can bring a revival to your heart and to your mind and to your body. It says it right here in the book of Hosea. Let's turn here. And Hosea, before we go to our board, Hosea 6. Hosea 6. And let's see what this work that Jesus did for the people also is a message for us in these last days. Hosea 6, look at verse 1 through 3. Say amen when you have that. Hosea 6, verse 1 through 3 says, Come, this is what happened when Jesus came to the earth and was doing this ministry with the apostles. Come and let us return unto who? The Lord. The Lord. A revival, amen? For he has torn and he will heal us. He has smitten and he will bind us up. After two days, he will revive us. In the third day, he will raise us up. And we shall live in his... Is that an encouraging word? In just a few days, he can both revive and bring us up where we have been in, in pain, in sorrow. But look at the next text. Then, by this ministry, then by this experience, then by this work, then shall we know... If we follow on to know the Lord from this healing work, this going forth is prepared as the morning, and he shall come unto us as the rain, as the latter and the former rain upon the earth. Now, you don't understand what that means, do you? You don't understand what that Do you understand what that means? What ministry was given to the disciples that went up in the upper room? And what ministry did they come down doing after they received the Pentecost outpouring or the early rain in the book of Acts? Preaching, teaching, and healing. I mean, they got right to the preaching, teaching, and healing. What ministry will go into the spiritual upper room of the last days and come down with latter rain power and finish the work? See, you thought you were just coming to get a little, you know, little herbal remedies and a little health talk, a little cabbage wrap and go home. No, no, no. This is the gospel of health, brothers and sisters. The gospel of health. You can't separate the two. The ministry of the gospel of health. We can talk about a number of things. We're going to eat some good food in a minute. We're going to taste some things that are, are delicious, but also nutritious. But we can't let the mind dwell upon the fact that the food is all the gospel. Christ gave the 5,000 food with the gospel. Christ gave the, he the healing to the people that came to him with the gospel. And tonight we must have the whole message. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Let's look at our board. On our board, we have a title called Genesis Protocol. I'm not sure if you can, hope you can see that. If you can't, when I put the video up, you can always blow it up, put in that big screen TV you have in your house, and you can see everything very, very clearly. In the book of Genesis, we see a beginning of an outline, a regimen, a protocol of health. And we've not have tonight looked at a number of different uh, chapters of the Bible, portions, places, where we have looked at various highlighting or various ways by the Bible highlights certain foods, certain healing uh, 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 plants, if you will, certain uh, medicines that are able to give us a key to better health. Not just one key, a number of them. In this pictorial way, we've assembled them together to bring and stir up your pure minds, as the Bible says, to understand how all these aspects should be a part of your daily your monthly, your weekly, your regimen, your protocol for having health or being a part of this Genesis protocol, this Daniel diet. Let's look at it. In the book of Song of Solomon, you see on the far right corner to me, left corner to you, the, ter the term Solomon's superfoods. Remember we said that? 
We talked about how in the book of Song of Solomon, also in Ecclesiastes, also in Proverbs, but in the book of Song of Solomon, you see a number of superfoods, some of the most highly studied and touted superfoods are found in the Bible, but especially in the book Song of Solomon. Now, we see that when we talk about this outline under the superfood, we have a few there listed that are mentioned not only throughout the Bible, but especially here, and you would do well. Peter says, with prophecy, it would do well for you to take heed. When it comes to the gospel of health and the way these things are constantly dealt with and repeated, it would do well to take heed to these superfoods that Solomon speaks of and make them a part of your diet, your regimen, your protocol. That makes sense to you? A few scriptures. And Song of Solomon, let's turn to Song of Solomon, chapter 2. Let's go through this quickly for those who may not be able to see clearly from where you're sitting. And Song of Solomon, chapter 2, you have Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and Song of Solomon. In Song of Solomon, chapter 2, it talks about apples, grapes, and figs as healing in nature. As a matter of fact, Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verses 3, 5 and 13. Song of Solomon chapter 2, verses 3, 5 and 13. Let's notice that. In Song of Solomon chapter 2, it says this. Look at verse 3. Say amen when you have that. Amen. Are we in Song of Solomon chapter 2 and verse 3? It says, as the apple, here's a, a, a similitude or a symbolic use. As the apple tree among the trees of wood, so is my beloved among the sons. Now who can understand what that, that comparison is? That parallel really means. Among all the sons, this man is my beloved, he is chief. Just like among trees of the wood, apple is the best. This is what the Bible is saying here. That's why it's called the king of fruits. The Bible shows you right here in Song of Solomon. As all the men in the world, all the sons, this man is my beloved, he is the chief. He is the best. As the apples, here the tree of wood for the apple is the best. It's the king of fruit. Here we see it right here in the book of Song of Solomon, chapter 2 and verse 3. It says, I sat down under the shadow with great delight, and his fruit was sweet to my taste. It was not only good, it not only the best, but also it was sweet. Drop down to now, verse 5. Stay me with flagon. What's flagon? Who remember what we said that night? Raisins, right? Dried fruit. Raisins. Comfort me with apples. Can apples comfort you with digestive problems? Can apple comfort you with indigestion? Can apple comfort you by eating these apples when you have constipation, you need more cellulose and fiber in your diet? You can be comforted. You can be removing disease by apples. Comfort me with apple, for I am sick of love. I've never been sick in love, but my, if apple can help, I may, I may take a few. My wife may be watching this, so I may, maybe I am sick in love. Maybe, maybe I was wrong saying that. Take that back, baby. Uh, Song of Solomon 2 and verse 13. I got to go home, brother. I got to go home. I got to go home. Song of Solomon chapter 2 and verse 13 says this. It says, The fig tree put it forth her green figs, and the vines with the tender grape give a good smell. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. In other words, Here's a fig, and it's putting forth figs. Here is the grape, and it's putting forth grapes. Let's go to where this is. Let's go to where the fig and the grape is that put forth its fruit. Let's go and find this fruit. There's a spiritual meaning, but also this combination, or this, this combination of the fig and the grape is something that would cause these two that are in love to go away together to find this blessing. I find that this man is a blessing. He's my beloved. I find this woman is my blessing. But together, we're going to find this fruit. You missed that. He loved her. She loved him. But together, they said, you know what? Let's go together and find this fruit. And you would do well if you did the same thing. I wish someone was with me tonight. I wish someone was with me tonight. Apples, grapes, figs. The wise man said, I love this woman like you don't believe, but we're going to go together and find this fruit because this fruit is a blessing. I'm sick with love. This apple is helping me because it is the chiefest of fruit. Also it says in Song of Solomon chapter 6 and verse 11 this. It says also that nuts are a healing superfood. Song of Solomon chapter 6. 
Why is the Bible bringing out these things and mentioning these things? Because they are good, they're a blessing, and they are a secret of health and longevity. The people, I mean, even scientists are talking about the Mediterranean diet. Oh, we're so healthy in the Mediterranean diet. What's the Mediterranean diet? A diet generally following Bible foods, generally. Bible foods, foods found often in the Bible, figs, raisins, dates, so on, grapes, all these foods, and the juices from them are healing. Genesis, sorry, the Song of Psalms 611 says this, dealing with nuts, look what it says here. In Song of Psalms 611, it says, I went down into the garden of nuts. Can you imagine a whole garden full of these things? To see the fruits of the valley and to see whether the vine flourished and the pomegranates budded. So we see the vine fruits. What grows in the vine? Not just grapes. Certain berries grow in the vine. Aren't berries superfoods? Among all the superfoods, they said the berries are the greatest. Blueberries, blackberries, these things are filled with antioxidants. They have anti-aging properties in them that when we partake of them, it actually slows down cellular degeneration. It slows down the oxidation from the cell. It causes you to look younger. It, it takes the, the clock back, as it were, in appearance. You can't move the actual clock back, but you can look younger. Praise the Lord. I, maybe I'm the only one enjoying this message tonight. And again, notice the context. The wise man, the greatest king, the wisest man is saying, I'm going to search these fruits out. Who are you to say, well, that's good for you 2,000 years. I'm, if the wise man is searching these fruits out, it would behoove you to search these fruits out. Are you reading verse 6? I'm sorry, Genesis, uh, Song of Psalms 6, 11. The, the wise man said, I went down into the garden of nuts to see the fruits of the valley and to see whether the vine flourished and the pomegranate budded. He went to go examine, investigate, and partake of these fruits. And what about you? If you understand what we're looking at, say amen. amen. All right. I'll just make sure you're there. Drop your eyes down to Song of Solomon 8 and verse 2. Because we're talking about juices. Look at the book of Song of Solomon, chapter 8 and verse 2. Because not only do we need to have these superfoods, but also we found out that sometimes by juicing certain things, removing the fiber and taking the actual juice, we can accelerate healing and take large quantities of healing medicinal plant medicine that we couldn't sit down and eat readily, thereby cleansing the body to a greater degree, adding more help to the cells and strengthening the cells of the body and causing us to be even more vital, full of natural fuel, natural medicine that we could not sit down and eat at a sitting. It would be possible. The juicer removes the fiber, then we can take it in liquid form, the body can assimilate it and start cleansing the colon, cleansing the blood, cleansing the thymus, cleansing the arteries, along with good fibrous foods. Can we say amen to that? Amen. When the book of Song of Solomon chapter 8 and verse 2, it speaks of juice. Song of Solomon 8 and verse 2, we read this before, it said, I would lead thee. Again, the context is, this wise man is not only going to see these things, but he's leading others to investigate these things. What about you? I would lead thee and bring thee into my mother's house. That's the church. Who would instruct me, that's teaching, right? I would cause thee the drink of, what are you gonna get when you come to get instructed and you're being led to, you're getting a wine. Not the wine that turns up in the cup, which is false doctrine, a pure wine like Christ gave as a symbol of his blood. It says, spice wine of the juice of my, a fruit juice. The use of juices was found in the time of Solomon. I don't know if Solomon had a juicer, but he sure was juicy. And he instructed other people to do it. And you missed the symbolism there, but he took them to church to find out how to do it. Oh, are you, are you seeing this back in Pastor? In the church, they found out how to juice. This is how we understand this is not heresy. This is not, oh, don't watch. You can't be juicing in church. Okay. Broke up. They broke up the ceiling of one person's house during a prayer meeting that someone could be healed. These things are giving people the ability, the life, to accept the gospel. 
Oh, brothers and sisters, I wish that God would lead me down to the Garden of Nuts, down to the trees to find these foods and make them a part of my Genesis protocol. What about you? Amen. All right. Let's jump over to the other side, Daniel's diet. And it says on the Daniel's diet, pulse. And what's the name of the word pulse in the Hebrew? Who remembers? So, someone, someone like, feel like they have just dental surgery, wasn't it? Zero, what's that? Zeroam. Say it with confidence. Zeroam. Zeroam, right? And that Hebrew word means something that is sown. It means herb or from the garden. It is a simple term that, used, that is dealing with various types of food that are plant-based that come from the garden and from seeds. And of those seeds, Scholars many times are looking at the peas, the legumes as the family chiefly attributed to the word Zerom used in the book of uh, Daniel. And also we saw in the book of Genesis that the pot of pottage or lentils is what was given by Jacob to Esau. It's all the same food. And these pea proteins, along with other vegetables, because again, earth, all plant food, Genesis 129, Genesis 18, all that play into Zeroam, it is from the seed. Jesus said, every herb bearing seed shall be meat to you. Or, Zeroam basically, or that which was sown from a seed. It's all the same food. When we talk about the pea proteins, who remembers why we said, even though various types of natural plant-based proteins, nuts and so on, uh, uh, various types of beans are good, who remembers why we said that the legumes, the pea protein, chickpeas, split peas, green peas, lentils, why did we say that they were more healthier or more easily assimilated by the body? Why do we say that? Who remembers why? They're more alkaline. Because most proteins are acidic. And though they're good for the body, if you eat too much, like we generally do, it tends to make the body more conducive toward sickness and even inflammation, joint pains and so on. And you know when it really starts to crop up? When we get older. When we were young, in 18, 16, 13, 15, 20, even 19, we could eat uh, three, four, five, ten meals a day. Just burn it off, you know. Just throw it to me, Mom. Go out the door. Thanks. Eat running. Eating on the bike. Ride with your friends. Eating a sandwich. Do we go somewhere and go eat? Go ride someplace. Go eating all day long, and we seem like we didn't have any problem. Skin still clear. Wow, oh, looking out. Oh. Hair black, you know, just looking out. It's just, no, no, seemingly no problem, right? But as you hit 26, 27, 28, and you, and you have peaked at manhood, or if we're a woman, same thing, when you start peaking at your womanhood, and you're as beautiful as you're going to be. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you have that, G, that, that George Clooney D, uh, DNA. You're as beautiful as you're going to be. The body starts to now not make as much hydrochloric acid in the stomach as before. And your hydrochloric acid starts to weaken. This is why around that age, we start to develop indigestion. Because we're eating the diet of an 18-year-old with a 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80-year-old body. And we're taking all this kaopectate and, you know, Oh, oh, the devil is a liar. Oh. <laughs> Blaming the devil when God has given us excellent things and counsel and knowledge. The hydrochloric acid lessens. It's not as strong as it was when we were teenagers. And if we try to eat that large amount of whatever type of protein it is, animal or plant-based, it can't digest because the protein can't be digested as readily. We need to lower the amount of protein and it would do well for you. Because didn't Daniel prove it was the best diet in the whole world? All, all the kings, people, taken from all over the world on one side, Daniel three Hebrew boys on the other side, and they tested for 10 days to see who had the better and even outwardly the most effective diet for reviving people, strengthening, giving our countenance look, look health. And they had visions and dreams and great intellects with this type of eating and drinking regimen. But this diet of pulse, this diet of plant-based pea protein is even, now Daniel was probably a teenager, but still, pea protein is very easy to assimilate. It's very 
easy to digest. It's a slow digesting protein. It's a alkaline protein. The body assimilates it better. You, I'm not sure how many of you went, because it was kind of late yesterday, and went on Google and found that there are, I mean, bodybuilders that do not eat any chicken, beef, fish, nothing. They just use pea protein. And they look like Arnold Schwarzenegger's great, great, you know, granddaddy. Strong. I mean, you could, you could, you could, you can't believe in the mind that we generally have based upon nutrition. These people are just eating a plant-based diet. Pea protein is one of the best type of proteins you can get because it's so easy to break down. And again, even though it's good to break down, don't overdo it because again, if you're over 28. These, these lights, these lights, all you all look like 19, so I can't see these lights are, are blinding me. Don't want to offend anybody. If you're over 28, your, clock, your body clock is saying, ch -ch 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 -ch, lower that hydrochloric acid, ch -ch 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 -ch, and it's more easy for you, if you keep eating the same way you're eating, to have, even if you're using pea protein, indigestion. It's, it's more, more unlikely, but if you overdo it, you have problems even with pea protein. If you have arthritis, if you have painful joints, inflammation in your joints, you want to try and look at pea protein. We talked about our Daniel diet, going on the Daniel diet, a 10-day trial. Hopefully some people started, but pea protein is going to help those sore joints you have. Amen? Not only does it say pea protein, at the bottom there we threw in something called cruciferous vegetables. The word cruciferous means one that bears the cross. And we found that science have found that these vegetables uniquely call those that bear the cross are cancer fighters par excellence. Cabbage, Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, you name it. All those, those cruciferous vegetables are excellent. And we should, when we talk about a Genesis protocol or a regimen, we should incorporate some of this in our diet. You ever heard of the China study? Yeah. T. Colin Campbell went to China. Now, he should have went somewhere else, but I mean, that's just a whole other story into itself. But he went to China and found that the Chinese lived longer, had very little instances of certain diseases that are so prevalent in the West. I'm talking about the majority of China, not Beijing and Fuzhou and these places that are eating like us. The majority that are basically in the country and that are eating on farms, they eat a lot of beans, vegetables, and a lot of cruciferous vegetables, by the way. A lot of cabbage and brussels. And interestingly enough, people say, oh, soy is not good, soy is not good. Well, the issue is, how are you eating that soy? And how much you're eating? Because the Chinese eat soy and it doesn't bother them. They don't have estrogen problems. Why? Because when you combine it with the cruciferous vegetables, the estrogen issue seems to be not, they don't have the breast cancer issues we do. So it's something about the cruciferous vegetables when you mix them together that cause the soybean or soy curd or whatever they're eating to not be deleterious to them. Let's throw that out there. Not trying to say that you should go and eat soy like it's going out of style, but I'm just saying that when you mix it with the right type of food, the, the problems that people say that you can generally have are lessened, and the Chinese are a main example of that. So I need to personally, and I would encourage you, to look at pea protein as a part of your regimen. Look at these cruciferous vegetables as a part of your regimen. Look at these superfoods and make them a part of your regimen because the Bible is showing us a better way, a better way for us to eat that we may have life and life more abundant. Let's look at one last thing before we look at our last board and have a few things to taste in the back. In the middle it talks about Genesis 129, Genesis 318. And though we know that Genesis 129 talks about fruits and grains and so on, but under Genesis 129, we talked about seeds, because the word seed is found often there. And there are certain seeds that are very, very good for us to have. And we'll be talking about that more on tomorrow as we come again together and deal with this board. Flax and pumpkin seed. Flax seed is one of the best sources of your omega fatty acids. Now, I know people say, oh no, it's, it's cold water fish. Well, let's, let's, let's come let us reason together. Cold water fish does have omega fatty acids. But the fat, the animal fat, in fish will clog your arteries. To eat the amount of fish oil that you need, and again, mind you, you could eat fish oil and have some tremendous reversal of disease and also tremendous health benefits while still clogging your arteries. In the short term, this seems good. Short term, this goes away. But over the hill, over yonder, 
by and by, you're going to have the same problem as if you were eating any other animal product because again, animal fat clogs the arteries. Animal fat causes disease to accelerate. Cancer, diabetes, stroke, it is based upon animal fat. It's been proven scientifically. It's out there, but you're going to see it readily because the meat and dairy industry have this. What's this? Money. Soft skin? Money, 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 money. And they're lobbying in Washington right now. They're, wa they're trying to get everything to say that these foods are, does the body good and so on and so forth. But science is showing otherwise, brothers and sisters. We have to be wise in our choices. And we look at these, these seeds here. Flax seed is the best and most easily assimilated form of omega fatty acids you can get. And omega fatty acids are necessary for building the immune system, building a healthy cell wall. You say, what are cell walls? We're going to come back to this. We'll come back to this. Remind me to come back to this. Because my memory is not always as good as it used to be. Here's Adam again. I know Adam has bulked up a little bit since, since my last picture. It's all pea protein. It's no, it's no, no synthetics. It's all pea protein. Well, that's a 27 inch arm and bicep. Man, the Lord's blessings are good. Here we see Adam, or man, made from the elements of the soil. I talked about the cell wall. That's what I'm talking about, the cell wall. Your body has cells. These cells are made up from your, or make up tissue. In other words, when you eat food, now he was made from the soil, and he was taken from the soil, and he was converted. And God breathed into him, the breath of life, man became a soil, soul, a living soul, living tissue. And he couldn't go back and eat dirt or eat that which he came from. He had to have living food, converted food, which the tree and plant provides. The medium by which the restoration and the building up and the maintenance of this formerly soul, soil body, now living tissue body, is eating. So apples, oranges, peaches, plums, avocados, cherries, nuts, grains, seeds, so on and so forth, these things are taken in through the stomach. And the digestive process, protein in the stomach, Fats in the small intestine as they jump over the jejunum and you get the bile inside there. Oh, you know, you guys know all this stuff. You were paying attention in, in science class. I'm sure you were. These things are breaking down your foods so that these foods can be turned into blood. And if it's not digested well, it cannot be turned into good blood or your blood's not going to be as strong and pure and vital. Because remember, air, water, and nutrients, what man was made from, Air, water, and nutrients, what man needs to maintain this body. Air, water, and nutrients are the constituents of the blood that, from the stomach, food is made in the blood, and it feeds the tissue. The blood feeds the tissues. When it gets to the tissues, the tissues don't drink it in. The tissues are made up of smaller, little building blocks called cells. So the blood actually goes to the cells, and the cells have what's called receptor sites. If this little circular little ball floating around here was a cell, the cell has little mouths or doors called receptor sites. Some are for food, like glucose. Some are for water, called aquaporin. And if the nutrient has the right key, it can open it. Go right in, right? So the blood is bringing the life or bringing the air, the water, and the nutrients to the cell. And in a healthy, proper circulation, it's not only feeding the cell, bringing water. Cell says, oh, thank you. Aquaporin takes in the water. Says, oh, glu uh, glucose, thank you. Open, brings the glucose in. So it doesn't stay in the blood system and you have high blood sugar, which is diabetes. It opens the, the cell, bringing some insulin to do so, a little key comes in and now the cell is strengthened. Also the cell gets uh, the waste and poisons that are in it, it releases it. And the blood washes these things back to remove by breathing, by urine, and by stool, or going to the bathroom, a solid waste elimination, number two as some people call it, all right? So the 
proper function of the body, we take in food, in the stomach, through the mouth, digestion, turns into blood, the blood takes it to the tissues, the tissues take it to the cells, the cells open up and take the good stuff, the cell gives off toxins, and the blood takes and washes it back and brings it to various points to remove it, through the kidneys, through the lungs, it removes poisons. And this is a healthful environment, right? However, the cells and the cell wall sometimes is not strong. And the cell wall is not strong, it's more susceptible to attack from outside agencies or it can't hold water very well. It's, it, it will bleed water and it's not healthy. And if you lose like, too much water, you get dehydrated, right? Same thing with cells. The cell is almost like the human being. The cell breathes, it gives off carbon dioxide, it takes in nutrients, it needs water, it has elimination, it's just like a person. The Bible says, he that is faithful in that which is least, the cell, can be faithful also in much. If you provide your body air, water, nutrients, you remove toxins and so on, and you keep the environment free from, from those things that are harmful, then you can also take care of the cell. Because that's what the cell needs. The smallest part of the body needs what the entire body needs. And if you can constantly take care of your cells, he that's faithful in that which is least, we're faithful also in much. The whole body will be healthy. That's Bible and also science. But the cell wall, if it's not strong, it can't hold in the oxygen, it can't hold in the water, and it is more likely to get diseases or be taken over by bacteria or cancer and so on and so forth, unless it's strong. Even in the times of the Jews, they had the idea of building up the walls of Zion, building the walls of Jerusalem. Every cell in your body is like a little Jerusalem. And the DNA, which has all the different information about your cells and how your body's supposed to be, that's the Holy of Holies. That's where the Book of the Law is. The DNA has all, everything about you, it is written in the DNA. And as long as you provide everything that is needed, all the air, water, nutrients, then your body will be like that. People say, oh man, I don't know, I want to, you know, I want to do this, I want to feel, I don't know if I'll ever be better. You can be better, because it's all, it is written. It is written. The DNA, the DNA is how God makes man his own image. How do I get back to my, to my, to my, uh, to my wedding, my wedding figure? Well, it's in the DNA. If you do that which is right in his sight and keep his commandments, you can go back to that. If you are, you know, now if you're 90 years old, I'm not sure if you're going to be able to go back to your, to your wedding figure, you know. I'm sorry to tell you. However, you can reverse disease, you can reverse a lot of aging and also have longevity and quality of life because the DNA has written out everything about you and wants to maintain that. But it needs healthy cells, healthy tissues, healthy stomach, and right food and drinking, so on, to provide the health of these things. Without that, the DNA could be altered, the DNA could be, and that's why we get cancer from. The DNA becomes altered and you start making, rather than making a nice uh, 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 lymphatic cell over here, it actually starts to make a whole nother organ called a tumor. Where is that, where's that in God's divine image? This is being something that's altered. An enemy has done this. But the cell wall, I want to lose my point, the cell wall is a main way that we keep the cell healthy. The cell wall is made from the omega fatty acids. So without the omega fatty acids, and we get it largely, we get it in a number of foods, but the greatest, most, uh, Dense form of omega fatty acids is found in flaxseed. Flaxseed. You can go to the store and get flaxseed or ground flaxseed. And it's very, very good. Sprinkle a little bit on your food, doesn't taste like anything. It tastes like flour, it doesn't taste like anything. You sprinkle on your food, on a salad, wonderful. You would never know it's there. And it provides what you need. And it helps the cell. Not only help the cell, you will notice your skin and your hair and the color of your hair and the the sheen over here will improve because you're getting what your body needs. Because if you feed the cells, 
the tissues, whether they're hair tissue, skin tissue, will also be healthy. Now, I'm not sure if your arms will be this big, but hey, they'll be healthy. Amen? Okay. Somebody wants big arms. Now, um, well, you know what? We have time for that board. We'll look at that board tomorrow. How many are ready to taste a few things that we have made for you to try out tonight? A couple people? Okay. I know it's getting kind of late. We're going to give you too, too late a taste test. So let's go to the back. Let's have a word of prayer. I'm going to go and taste some things. I basically have given you an opportunity to taste some pea protein. Uh, we have a little salad there. Uh, we have some whole grain crackers, so on. Something very, very light. But it's a start. We have uh, black beans, and we have lentils, and we have a variety of, who knows what hummus is? Hummus is, is a chickpea paste. It's chickpeas with herbs and so on mixed together. We have three or four different types of, of hummus that you can taste and see. If you've never had hummus before, you can get a taste of what it is. And again, it's a pea protein. Very, very strong protein. Very, very easily assimilated protein. Very alkaline protein that's going to help. And I think that just a simple taste of some of these things, made with no oil, made with no animal products, is going to let you see how the certainty of the things in which you've been instructed. Amen? Now for those watching my live stream, I'm sorry, this is not no smell of vision or taste of vision, but prayerfully, I've been promising for a while, I'm going to, when I get all my new technology together, actually do a cooking thing. We'll talk about that and maybe give some things and you can come on down to Florida and taste some things, but tonight is not, not your night. But God bless you anyway. Uh, and I mean, I'm not trying to be mean to them, but you know, they know, they know. There's only some limitations. So let's have a word of prayer. And then we'll start going back. There's chairs back there. We can sit down and we can talk. I'm going to demonstrate something as well. And uh, let the Lord bless you real good. Amen. Let's have a word of prayer as we close our session. As far as the preaching part. Heavenly Father, thank you again. Bless us. Bless the food that's been prepared. And we pray again that the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts may be and is acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Blessed are the saying in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.